Excellencies, distinguished delegates, Executive Director of UNICEF, Ms. Anne Venema, Ambassador Mr. Dow, Mr. Bear, distinguished guests, youth representatives, the Convention on the Rights of the Child recognized for the first time that children have a human rights and that they need a special protection that adults do not. Over the past 20 years, the Convention has been our beacon, our template, our guide in protecting and nurturing the youngest and most vulnerable members of our society. Its influence has been profound. It has become history's most widely accepted international human rights treaty. 193 states have ratified it. We look forward to the day when all UN members give it their full backing. The Convention has had a huge impact on the agenda for human rights and development. It has inspired new approaches and advances in child survival and education, and that it has increased awareness of children's specific uh, problems. But realizing the rights in the Convention remains a huge challenge. Billions of children uh, still die before their fifth birthday from largely preventable diseases. Billions more lack access to clean food, water, and education, and are victims of violence and exploitation. Children are physically and emotionally vulnerable. They are often the first to succumb to disease and malnutrition. They can be scarred for life by mental or emotional abuse. That is why children should always have the first claim on our attention and resources. But this is especially true now, at a time when multiple crises threaten the poorest people, particularly in developing countries. Children must be at the heart of our thinking on climate change, on the food crisis, and on the other challenges we are addressing on a daily basis. We know what to do, and we know how to do it. Even during the most severe economic crisis in decades, the means are at hand. It is up to us to seize the opportunity and build a world that is fit for children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Secretary General, President of the UNICEF Executive Board, Ambassador Dow, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me also acknowledge thanks to UNICEF's advocate for children affected by war, Ishmael Bey. Good morning and thank you all for being here today. Twenty years ago, in a room just down the hall from here, a historic decision was taken. On November 20th, 1989, world leaders came together in the General Assembly to adopt the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Since then, the Convention has become the most ratified human rights treaty in history. The 20th anniversary of the Convention also coincides with Molly chairing the UNICEF Executive Board under the very, very capable stewardship of Ambassador Dow. This is particularly fitting as Molly co-chaired the committee that oversaw the finalization of the Convention on the Rights of the Child in 1989. Much has been achieved during the last 20 year years. The annual rate of under age five deaths has fallen 28%. Between 1990 and 2006, 1 1.6 billion people worldwide gained access to improved water sources. More children are attending primary school than ever before, and the gender gap is narrowing. Children are no longer the missing face of the HIV AIDS pandemic. Advances are also being made in child protection. 
though data is still difficult to come by. Important steps have been taken to help protect children from serving as soldiers or trafficked into prostitution or into domestic servitude. The age of children getting married is rising in some countries and the number of girls subjected to female genital cutting is gradually falling. Yet, much more remains to be done. That an estimated 8.8 .8 million children continue to die before they celebrate their fifth birthday is simply unacceptable. They die of diseases such as pneumonia, malaria, and measles. They die because they are malnourished. They die because they don't have access to clean water. They die because they do not have access to basic medicines. Other children have lost their parents to the scourge of AIDS, and many will never see the inside of a schoolroom. Millions more lack protection against violence, abuse, exploitation, discrimination, and neglect. In my travels, I have met many of these children who have shared their personal and painful stories that are sadly all too familiar. I have spoken to girls in the Democratic Republic of Congo where sexual violence, pillaging, and burning of homes and killing define their daily lives. I've met girls who have been forced to become sexual slaves or sold to brothels for someone else's gain. And I've met boys who are, were abandoned by their families as witches in Central Africa. I met a girl who was forced into marriage at the age of only 10 to a man three times her age. And I've met boys who were, who were abducted from their families and forced to wage war in their own countries, sometimes even in their own communities. As we mark the 20th anniversary of the convention, let us remember the unspeakable, unspeakable violations of rights that occur almost daily to the most innocent of innocents, children. The world must build on the progress achieved to ensure that stories such as theirs become part of the past. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mayra Velar. I'm 18 years old from Brazil. We would like to thank you for giving us this platform to make our voices heard at the 20 year celebration of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. We are really happy about this. I'm one of the thousand black children who live in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. Because of the color of our skin, we are constantly being discriminated. The truth is that we live in a situation of disadvantage. Our community, the favela, has been the scenario of years and years of a brutal violence where black children are the most affected. Can you imagine how is it to live your daily life with a war going on in front of your door? Is it fair that we have to wake up under the sound of bullets? Children have the right to protection. Some weeks ago, in a favela called Mandela, a 15 years old boy was asked by his mother to go out to empty the trash when, in the street, he was shot in his head by the police. He died. And do you know why it happened? He was mistaken to be a criminal because he was black. Some numbers show that in 2007, within only three months, 120 people died in my favela. 105 were black people. Facing this problem, I couldn't cross my arms and wait for something to happen. I decided to take action. First, I joined the theater group in my favela to talk about our daily lives and discuss how can we improve safety in the community. Then we mobilized 300 people for a street walk as a protest for all those deaths. We raised our voices very loudly in the hope that our opinion be taken into account. It was taken into account. More peace returned to our favela. Last year, I was nominated for the International Children's Peace Prize I won the prize and I felt happy, stronger, 
because it gave me more voice to keep bringing hope for my community, showing that another world is possible. I stand for the beggars. I stand for the eight years old boy who, di who died at 8 a.m. when he was going to the bakery. I stand for those who died without even knowing why. I stand for my people. That's why I'm here for. I am happy to give the floor to my friend, child rights advocate, Orn. More than 2.5 million people have been forced to leave their homes empty-handed after the conflict in the northwest region of Pakistan and the earthquake that devastated my country in 2005. More than a half of the displaced are children like me. I ask you all for a 10 second silence for the children who died in natural disasters. My name is On Shazad. I am 16 years old and I come from Lahore. I am here today to tell you about the, a bit about the situation in my country. Children who, along with being homeless, face a variety of critical challenges, ranging from malnutrition and poor access to education to exploitation and child labor. These children are voiceless, invisible, and victims of experiences that no child should ever have to endure. Today, my country is badly affected by terror. This has a huge impact on children who seem to be forgotten by the rest of the world. In the realm of conflict, children of my country are being subjected to psychological traumas of bomb blasts at the age of only six. They play in unhygienic conditions, scared under the weapon of discrimination. Getting to school for these children is as hard as getting to space. Many have never even seen a textbook. Reading one is unthinkable. These are troubles of every day. But still, these children manage to bring a smile on their face. As a child rights advocate, I have worked to support adolescent victims of the earthquake that struck my nation. I, together with my peers, raised money for food, warm clothes, and other necessities. We supported displaced children and moved them to camps so that they would not come across human traffickers. I also had a chance to speak, from the, uh, to, speak to a boy from these camps when he was rescued by Pakistan Society for the Rehabilitation of the Disabled. He told me how much he wished to study. I asked why, and he replied with a smile and said, because education is like a ray of light, and I want that light. Millions of children like him hope for the same light. I urge you to listen to their call, but also respond to them and take concrete actions. More lately, I have been working as an activist to promote action on climate change. Awareness, participation, education, food, and health. These words sound impossible to a displaced child in my country, but they are real. And the 20 years marking the convention of the rights of the child is a testimony to that. However, how unfortunate is, it is that we still see millions of children who need help and only a handful of adults who are willing to give them their deserving rights. Why is it that many people in this world don't see the millions of children still in pain, still alone, still waiting to be rescued? So today, I ask them, to th overthrow their selfishness and indifference, and to show us that we, as human beings, have not lost all hope for humanity. Thank you.